Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. While they do that, we welcome everybody who is online today, who's watching now or who will watch later. Let us know where you're watching from and how we can pray for you, where you're at and how we can be blessed to have you there. Hallelujah. Bring me down just a little bit. Good morning and welcome. Welcome, everybody. I made a mistake this morning. I'm going to admit it before we even start so that you won't judge me the all, all the way through it. I have not had uh, sugar for 56 days. Mm. Some devil put a donut truck in the front yard. 56 days right down the toilet. I walked outside. I said, why not? Let's just get a box. That's literally my hand shaking. I ate a box of donuts in my office. I got 12 and I'm like, well, these are good. Let's see how that one tastes. They had pebbles all over the top of them, fruity pebbles, and then the maple donut and then the sprinkles. I ate them. I feel like I'm about to die. My heart is beating out of my chest. I thought it was the Holy Ghost first and I'm like, no, that ain't the Holy Ghost. That's the devil trying to kill me. So y'all pray for me. I'm just going to try to survive. Whew. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> huh, happy Mother's Day. We're blessed to have you with us this morning. I'm praying that God's going to meet you where you are and bless you in ways that you don't even anticipate yet. If you have your Bibles, let's start in Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. It's been, in full disclosure, it's been a long time since I've spoken on, on Mother's Day. So long that, you know, I really didn't know, you know, how to approach this or where to go. So I'm just going to go straight after it. Uh, months ago when we were, that's how I feel. <laughs> months ago when we were looking at the calendar, uh, for the first time in many, many years, this year I wanted Mother's Day. You look at your calendar, you look at your schedules, you look at different dates on that calendar. But this year I wanted Mother's Day. And, and for me, for my heart to yours, so you'll know two specific reasons. Number one is because I truly believe that there is a shift happening in my life and where the, the, the focus of the rest of my life and ministry is going to be primarily on men. That's where I'm going. And so I truly believe this, that if a man is going to be a biblical man, he needs to know how to properly understand and honor women. I, I truly believe that. If you're going to be a man, if you're going to be a man of God, you not only know, know how to be a man, but you know how to properly honor women. You know how to properly do that. You know how to properly understand him. I don't buy this rubbish where people say women cannot be understood. That's not true. They can be understood. We're just too lazy to do it. So we're going to try to focus on that. And number two, I wanted to speak today because I've gotten, me personally, maybe, maybe some of you, I have personally gotten tired of all the toxicity in our culture. And the finger pointing and the, the, the negative everything, it has impacted everything. These, 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 these protests, these demonstrations, these riots, all this anger. It's just an overflow of all of the negativity that is going on in our world today. We are living out Ghostbusters number three. We are living out the negativity of the world that is, is and Mother's Day was victimized by it. There was a time, I don't know if you're old enough to remember this, but there was a time when mothers and mothering was revered. It was revered. It was respected. And, but now so much of that admiration has turned to animosity. Uh, our, our blame it culture has to find somebody to put a finger on it and blame them for all of that. And I understand it, but I still lament that that has happened and that is happening even still presently, currently in our, in our culture. Um, because there was a time in, in the world, especially in church, when this, this Mother's Day thing was, was truly celebrated. But now it's almost like sometimes it's like walking through a minefield as you're trying. I talk to pastors all the time and they're like, hey, what are you doing on Mother's Day? And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you're just going to go after it. We're just going to go after it because I don't think that, that you should cancel it because somebody didn't appreciate it. Um, so, so, so right off the top, just before I even go anywhere this morning, if your experience with mothers and mothering was bad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that happened. I'm sorry that you feel that way. And I'm sorry that you didn't have the, the optimum 
of that. I, I respect that. I understand that. No stones here. There will be no stones thrown at anything or anybody about that. But at the same time, we shouldn't cancel all that out because God's word still says we are to honor. We are to give honor to where we're supposed to honor mothers and fathers. So we're going to do that today. I have dual assignments. Here they are. Number one, I want to honor mothers. At some point in this thing, I want to find a way for you to be able to honor and bring honor to your mother or yourself. And number two, I want to speak specifically on an assignment, this Romans chapter 16, the assignment of being mothers to others. Romans chapter 16 in verse 13. If you wouldn't mind, stand just one more time for the reading of the word this morning. Romans chapter 16, one single verse in verse 13. Well, the Apostle Paul said this. He said, Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, and mine. In the New Living Translation, it says this. Greet Rufus, whom the Lord picked out to be his very own, and the Apostle Paul, and also his dear mother, who has been a mother to me. This is amazing. This is a blessing. The assignment of being mothers to others. Let's pray. Father, give us a word today that will live beyond this moment. That God would, would begin the process or continue the process of restoration. Father, restore so much that has been taken away from us and bring us back to first love, first priorities. We give you thanks for it. And they said together, amen. amen. Please be seated if you will. Several weeks ago, when I started pulling all of this together, um, I got an email from someone in another state that confirmed for me that I was heading off in the, in the right direction. It was long and it was honest. I love those. It was long and it was honest. And it was all about Mother's Day. And what they were saying was that this was a year that they were very hopeful for Mother's Day this year because the last year that they had, the last Mother's Day, was disastrous for them. And when she told me this story, I just, you know, it's one of those moments when you read something that somebody has walked through and it's just so painful that even you, you can feel it. You can feel it in her words. You can feel it as she's expressing it. She said that last year, just before Mother's Day, she and her husband, after several years of marriage, many years of marriage, finally agreed to, to separate. And it was a very bitter, bitter, ugly separation. Uh, they had uh, two teenagers living in the house and an infant. The two teenagers sided with the father and left the mother, left her in her home with this infant child. And she said, so on Mother's Day morning, when she woke up, the, the infant was sick. And so she woke up on, on Mother's Day morning of all days with an empty house and a sick baby. No cards, no calls, no flowers, no love, no lunch, no honor, no pictures, nothing. She said she spent the entire day mothering a sick infant who was constantly vomiting on her and she was having to clean all of that up and clean herself up. And she said, it was not the day that I expected. It was not the Mother's Day that I had ever thought in my wildest imaginations would have ever happened to me. But she said in conclusion that, thank God, they had some time during this year reconciled with one another. They were back living together. And she said, I'm very, 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 very hopeful that this year is going to be much different than last year. The same day, I love how God does things. The same day I got an email from Family Life with four reminders for mothers in general about mothering and Mother's Day. And I wanted to pass those along to you and help maybe form a basis for what I want to talk about. Number one is this for mothers. It's okay to feel let down, but it's not okay to stay there. Come on. Yes, sir. Uh, every mother, and I need your help, is going to experience times in your life and in your mothering when it is absolutely amazing. Yes. When everything comes together and it all works perfectly and everything is working just right. But there will also be times, always going to be times when it is going to completely let you down. And in those times when it lets you down, you have to remember this, that it is okay to feel let down, but it is not okay for you to stay there. Amen. You can't stay there. You can't stay there for long. You've got to get up. Number two, remember this, that from God's point of view, whether you believe it or not, because they are your children, listen, you are exactly the mother that they need. Amen. Right. Come on. That was weak. Huh. 
<laughs> Some of y'all are like, oh, have you met my kids? <laughs> Hear it one more time. I said, from God's point of view, not yours. From God's point of view, you are the exact mother that they need. And you know that's true because God gave them to you. Before they were ever born, God knew the children that you were going to have. He knew the children he was going to place in your care. And sometimes you have got to remember this, especially in this ridiculous culture that we live in, that you don't have to be the perfect mom, whatever that is. You just have to be their mom. You don't have to. Let me set somebody free from that this morning. You don't have to be the perfect mom, whatever that is. All you have to do is be their mom. And that is such a struggle because everywhere we look, there seem to be perfect mothers everywhere. In the pickup line at school, you see them every day. In the pickup line at school with their manicures and their makeup and their chate latte from Starbucks in a custom cup. You get behind them and they've got a clean car and they've got all them stickers. Mom, dad, kid, 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 dog, dog, cat. They've got... Anybody else? I'm preaching from experience. Now, most of the time, you drive up in that line looking as ratchet as you've ever looked in your life. That's real life. You didn't... <laughs> that's real life. You didn't brush your teeth, much less your hair. Dark glasses covering the, the bags that are underneath your eyes. Drinking cold coffee from a 10-year-old coffee mug that you grabbed before you ran out of the house. Reminding yourself for the fifth time that you really need to clean this car because you lost two kids on the way to school that morning <laughs> in the back seat. Remember this, that you are the mother that you need to be. Number three, no matter what it looks like or feels like, you are not alone. Right. You are never alone. Even when you are alone, you are never alone. And this last one is the point of the word that I'm giving you today is that this, number four, write this down. You are making an impact. I can't even stress to you how important that is to hear. It's important for me to say it. It's important for you to hear. It. You are making an impact. Because in the process of parenting, there are going to be thousands and thousands of times when you feel like you are not. And there is a lot of evidence that is going to work to convince you that you are not doing anything good at all. <laughs> have you ever just looked at your children and said, wow, but not in a good way. <laughs> Y'all jumped on that way too soon. I mean, sometimes you do, you look at your kids and go, oh, wow. And then other times you look at your kids and go, oh, wow. They don't brush their teeth. They can't find their shoes. They pitch a fit in the grocery store. They're in the dentist. They've got eight cavities. You find science experiments underneath their bed that was food from three weeks ago. You look at your kids and say, good God Almighty. In those moments, you have to remember this, that motherhood and mothering isn't always made up of big things and highlights. But most offering, let me help you mothers. Mothering is made up of thousands of little things. The thousands and thousands of little things that you do. The rides that you take them in the car everywhere you go, the laundry that you do that never seems to finish, the laughter that you hear in your household, the hugs that you give, showing up when nobody else showed up, tucking them in at night when you really are too tired, the bedtime prayers that you say with them that, that remind them how important it is for them to put their faith in God even in the last moments of the day, even those times when you were the mean mom and you didn't let them do what they wanted to, you made them keep their word because you wanted to teach them what it was like to stay disciplined in an undisciplined world. Those are the little things that you do. I'm going to get out and get this before I get here. So on Mother's Day, I want us to bring back. And we're going to do it before we leave. Bring back the celebration. But let's start in Romans chapter 16. The book of Romans is one of the most significant books of the New Testament. You understand that it is the ABCs of our faith. When, so when somebody asks me when they're a new Christian and they say, what should I read in the Bible? First of all, I say, go to the book of Romans. Understand, read and understand the book of Romans. Romans chapters 1 through 15 are doctrinal. They tell you all the doctrines of our faith. They tell you how to be saved. They tell you what you must do to be born again. All of that. But as we come to the last chapter, Romans 16, it becomes much more personal and much more benedictory as Paul mentions in chapter 16, no less than 29 people to whom he doesn't just, listen, he doesn't just mention, but he indicates a personal relationship with each of them. 
if you will, in English majors, he includes an adjective for each person describing their character, their work, or their importance in his life. Read it again when you have the chance. Romans chapter 16. And included in that list, if you blink, you'll miss it, is verse 13, where he says, greet Rufus, whom the Lord picked out to be his very own, and also his dear mother, who has been a mother to me. I don't know if that surprised anybody else when you read it, but it did me. He said, she has been a particular blessing to me in my life. As Paul is greeting his friends in Rome, he says, say hello to Rufus and his mother, who has been a mother to me. Now, just like everything else that's in the Bible, it gets better the more you know about it. At first, when you read this, you may just think that this is just a random friend of the Apostle Paul's, just, just some gentleman named Rufus who was specifically selected by God for some reason. But then you find out that this man, Rufus, Bible scholars, is the son of a man named Simon. Simon the Cyrene, who has the distinction of being the man who was compelled to carry the cross of Jesus on the day that he was crucified. What are the odds? What are the odds? In Luke chapter 23, in the midst of all of the chaos of the crucifixion of Jesus, when Jesus could no longer stand, when he had lost the strength of his carpenter's life, when he could no longer stand, having lost as much blood as he lost, they looked around and they saw a man standing there, Simon the Cyrene, carry the cross. Simon the Cyrene carried the cross from that point all the way to Golgotha, to Calvary's Hill. No doubt, there is no doubt that that experience changed him forever. There is no doubt that on that day he went home to his children, two sons. He told his sons about it. He told his wife about it. He was there. I, I don't know if anybody gets this as much as I do, I, I, but I, he was there. He saw it. He saw what he saw. He heard what he heard. He, good God, he carried the cross of Jesus. And he goes home and he tells his family. Four to seven years later, in Acts chapter 9, a terrorist by the name of Saul of Tarsus is on his way to Damascus. <sighs> I get more excited about my sermons than you do. Saul is converted on the Damascus road and he gives his life to Jesus and he becomes the Apostle Paul. One of the most significant characters, not just in the New Testament, one of the most significant characters in the entirety of the entire Bible. He becomes a missionary. He becomes a church planner. He plants churches all over Asia. He becomes an apostle, the Apostle Paul. He writes two-thirds, most of the New Testament that you have in your Bible. He wrote all of that by revelation from God. Before he died, he was given the honor of being taken up into seeing heaven. He saw heaven with his own eyes. And somehow, he comes into friendship with the son of the man who carried the cross of Jesus. And now, in his final greetings, please follow this timeline, 23 years after his conversion, 23 years after that day on the Damascus Road, 23 days after he gave up his former life and began to follow Jesus, 23 years of struggles and persecution and hatred and stoning and shipwreck and being beaten and in peril constantly. 23 years after his conversion, he mentions this man's mother. And he says, she's been like a mother to me. Which is not an insignificant nicety. It's not. It's, it's bigger than you think. Watch this. I'm building a cathedral here. That when Jesus said, he said this many times, that any time someone made the decision to follow him, there would always be a cost. Did he not? 
Jesus said, anytime anyone decides to come after me, there will be a cost. There will always be a sacrifice. There will always, hear me, there will always be a sacrifice made. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Jesus said, you will be hated of all men for my sake. Before you, when you are reviled, blessed are you when you are reviled and persecuted and cursed. Know that great is your reward in heaven. Sometimes that would mean even, listen, listen, even the loss of your family. Matthew 10, 36. Jesus said, a man's enemies will be they of his own household. Now what we know historically, and it still happens, is that whenever someone has converted to Jesus, there are times when their families disown them. I'm building this and treat them as if they died. In some cases, there are extreme circumstances where those families have actually even thrown a funeral. I sat last week and I Googled this because I, I just wanted to know it. I wanted to understand it. I Googled people that have been rejected, people that have been disowned by their family because of their faith in Christ, and the list is endless. In other cultures of the world, they actually throw a funeral and say, that person is no longer a part of this family. They are dead. They write them off. They write them out of their wills. They have nothing to do with them. In Philippians chapter 3. As Paul is sharing his testimony in verse 5, in the testimony of Paul, he says, I was circumcised the eighth day, the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Concerning the law of Pharisee, that phrase Hebrew of the Hebrews doesn't just mean exemplary. I always read it to mean that Paul was saying he was boasting about being a Hebrew of the Hebrews. But that word of also means out of. So he was also saying a Hebrew out of Hebrews. I'm out of that. In verse 8, Philippians chapter 3, he says that because of following Jesus, listen, I have suffered the loss of all things. Yeah. Scholars believe as I do, some scholars believe as I do, that that included his connection to his family. You've never thought of it that way. Please remember, listen, most likely he was excommunicated from his family because he was no longer a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was now a follower of the way. In the Bible, as he gives his testimony, listen, over and over again, listen, listen, he alludes to his father, but he never mentions his mother. Watch any sports star. Watch any sports star. When they get the chance to say something, that one of the first things they say is, hi, mom. I want to thank God for my mom. Watch this. Paul, in all of his testimonies in the Bible, he alludes to his father, but he never one time, never once mentions his mother, which makes this comment in Romans chapter 16 even much more meaningful that without knowing who he was and who he would become, she became a mother to the most significant convert in the history of the church. Rufus's mother became the mother to the most significant convert in the church. Paul never mentions his mother, but he gives honor to this woman for being a mother to him. We started today with four affirmations. Number one, it's okay to feel let down. Don't stay there. Number two, you are exactly the mom that they need you to be when they need it. Number three, you are not alone. And number four, you are making an impact. Whether you know it or not. Okay, now I'm going to preach. Y'all ready? How many mothers lay in bed at night and cry themselves to sleep thinking that you're making no difference in the world? You don't have to answer. How many times has it happened where you lay in your bed and you cry tears, they stream down both sides of your face because you realize this, that no matter how hard you try, your house, your family, and your children still seem to be a mess. That as a person, as a mother, the one thing that you wanted to be, when you were little and you were holding a baby doll, everybody used to say, you're going to be the greatest mother ever. When you were standing there and you found out you were pregnant and you were taking those pictures holding that gut, holding that belly, <laughs> and that big smile hanging over you, you never dreamed that life was going to be like this. But now as you're doing this, the one thing you wanted to be good at, you don't feel like you're good at it. You don't matter. No one cares. Your voice is falling on deaf ears. No one listens to you anyway. Everyone else's kids are amazing. Honor students. Graduating with honors, signing up for college, and your kids can't seem to figure out how to flush the toilet. 
Right? You ever walk in the bathroom and go, are you serious? That's it. That's it. Billy, come here. Just do that. That's it. Romans chapter 16 was 23 years after his conversion. And so it is entirely possible as I read this that when his mother rejected him and disowned him, that this unknown and this unnamed mother stepped in and became the mother that he needed for the rest of his life. Mothers, sometimes you're mothering people that you don't even know that you are. You're mothering people that you don't. So let's put some shoes on this. How many mothers in here? How many mothers do I have in here? Raise your hand. I know you're tired, but try it anyway. Raise up your hand. How many of your children are constantly dragging a parade of kids through your house and through your life? Every time you turn around, there's another little, who is that? I don't know. Every time you go somewhere, there's another kid in your car. There's another one and another one. There's another mouth at your table. You sit down to eat and you're like, who in God's name is that? Every time. You want to go somewhere, there's one more. Can we bring kids? We bring one more friend. There's one more kid at the breakfast table, one more mouth to feed, extra dishes in your sink, one more person on the camping trip, one more kid wants to go to Yamato. (laughs) Don't you love that? It costs 50 bucks a person to go to Yamato. Let's bring five of my friends. No! Let's go. Let their mama take them to Yamato. Sometimes it seems like every time you walk into your kitchen, there is another teenager with their head in your refrigerator. It's happened to us. Am I right? I literally have walked into my kitchen and found a stranger with his head in my fridge and said, who are you? (laughs) Today, (laughs) man, I'm going to get this all out of me before I get out of here. I'm still mad about it. Today is Mother's Day. And my primary assignment is to bring back the celebration of mothers. I'm serious that that has been covertly avoided, even though the book of Exodus, God said, you will honor your father and your mother. You will honor them. We should loudly celebrate those who are doing it right. We come on, y'all. We should loudly celebrate anyone and every mother that is doing it right. If you had a mother or you have a mother who is, you should not be silent about it. You should be bragging about it. Post it on Facebook. Take a picture. Let everybody know my mama is a saint. She's doing it right. Brag about her. Amen. 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 Sammy Hagar, when he was getting his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, I just saw it the other day. Sammy Hagar. None of y'all know who that is. (laughs) Y'all are looking at me like y'all don't know who that is. Van Halen, lead singer. Come on, Tommy, help me out. Cabo Wabo. (laughs) Sammy Hagar. David Lee Roth was not the lead singer of Van Halen. Anyway. Back in my day, it was Sammy Hagar, and he was the best one. He was getting a star on the Walk of Fame, and he did not talk about his dad. He talked about his mom. He said, my mother took care of us. My dad was an alcoholic, abusive man. My mother had to raise four kids all by herself. And so today, as I get this star, I don't want to say anything about my dad. I want to make sure that my mom knows that the only reason that I'm here today is because of what she did. And he honored her strength and her sacrifice. If you have someone that has done it or is doing it right, you should honor them as loudly as you can. We should loudly, loudly celebrate the ones who are doing it right. And we should obediently celebrate those who don't. Y'all didn't shout right there. (laughs) Obediently celebrate the ones that don't. Even the ones who fail and fall short. I grew up in the Beaver Cleaver household. I, I grew up in Little House on the Prairie. I did. My mom was a saint. My dad was a saint. We never yelled in our house. It was, it was amazing to grow up in it. I thought, it, I thought everybody's house was like that. And then I went and visited some of my friends. I'm like, who in the world? I acknowledge that so many children did not grow up in that. Some of you grew up in hell. You grew up in hell house. I understand that. Maybe your mother wasn't the mother she could have been. But maybe that was all she could be. Maybe she didn't know how. Maybe she just didn't know how to do that. Maybe she failed completely. But that doesn't change the command of God. 
That doesn't change the command of God that you will honor your father and mother. So this is in my heart today and I pray that y'all will walk out of here with this ringing in your ears that we should honor our mothers if we can. Amen. Honor them. But my secondary assignment today is to shine a light on this unknown, unnamed woman who made such a difference in Paul's life that Paul wrote it into the eternal record that you still have sitting in your lap this morning that what I didn't have, she became. I love that, that what I did not have in my life, she became unknown. Listen, unknown and unseen does not mean unimportant. So moms, where's all my moms at? Keep doing the things that you are doing in your home for your children and for those other little urchins and orphans that keep showing up in your house, in your life, in your car. At the line at Culver's, costing you another $20. <laughs> Keep mothering them. Amen. I know it's not easy. Somebody say amen. amen. Mm. Why does God remind me of this? The, Kathy bought me some dehydrated seaweed. <laughs> I love dehydrated seaweed. It's the weirdest thing. It's just, uh, it's so good. Teriyaki flavored, wasabi flavored. It's a special little treat that we have at our house. And she bought me a case of it from Costco. And I was like, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> put it all up in my cupboard. I put it all up in my cupboard. And I was down to my last box. I was down to my last little box. And I was at work one day and I thought to myself, boy, I can't wait till I get home. I'm going to eat that last little box of seaweed when I get to the house. I get to my house and I go in and I go look for my little box of seaweed. My seaweed is gone. <laughs> Nobody else in my house eats seaweed. She doesn't touch it. Caitlin doesn't touch it. My seaweed is gone. I call a family truce. I call a family meeting. <laughs> Where's my seaweed? Turns out one of Caitlin's little urchin friends loves seaweed. She had been secretly eating all of my boxes of seaweed. Every time she would come to my house, she would run to the cupboard and grab a box. A little heifer. And I, but, but then when you know her story, her story is her family. She's an orphan. She's like an urchin. She just lives in other people's houses. She has nowhere else to be. So eat it, baby. It's okay. We'll keep it in the cupboard. Eat it. So... I'm going to try to wrap this up because this is horrible. You may not feel like you may not feel like you're making an impact, but you are. Amen. You are not adding a burden to a burden, but as you are mothering your own, make room for mothering others along the way. Because they may be you may be all that they have. You may be the mother that they don't have. You may give the hug that they never get. You may make the meal or <laughs> provide the seaweed <laughs> that they don't ever get at their house. You might be the voice that speaks into their life when no one else will. Everyone else is yelling at them, but you're speaking to them. You may give the love that will be all the love that they will give. I don't know if anybody gets this, but for the rest of his life, the Apostle Paul, whenever he thought of this is so beautiful. When he thought of Rufus's mother, he thought of the mother he never had or he, that he lost. Greet Rufus and his mother and mine. What a blessing. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be a mom, even in this culture. Love them. Feed them. Correct them. Be the mother that they need. Because remember this, that in every situation, whether you feel like it or not, you are the, exactly the mother that they need. Yeah. If that were not true, God would not have given them to you. But he did. Singers, if you guys would come. Tony Robbins once said, I didn't want my mother to be the mother that I wanted. Tony Robbins said, if, if my mother had been the mother that I wanted, I would not be the man that I'm proud to be today. So even if you grew up in a situation where your mother was not all that she could be, 
can make you stronger. It can make you stronger. It can shape your mothering. I, I know that it shaped Kathy's mothering. Growing up in a situation that was not the best in the world, but it shaped her mothering. She's the best mother I know. This morning, you can be a mother and a mother to others. Let's bow our heads together today. Today, I'm celebrating mothers. This is my third Mother's Day without my mom. But I haven't been sad about that for one minute. Haven't been, don't plan to be. I'm excited for her. But that's me. Everyone handles things in their own way. I saw a very close friend of mine in another state that was today saying that she was going to avoid everything today because this is her first Mother's Day without her mother. She doesn't, doesn't know how to act, doesn't know how to go on. No stones. Everyone grieves differently. Dear lady, you handle that just as you are. We're praying for you. For every broken heart, I pray healing. For every broken family, I pray for restoration. For so many feelings of inability and unworthiness, you don't feel like you're worthy, you don't feel like you're able, you don't feel like you're doing it very well at all, listen. Free yourself from that feeling that you have to be the perfect mom. You don't have to be the perfect mom, you just have to be their mom. That's always enough. My heart came in here this morning to celebrate every mother. So, every mother, every mother, we honor you. We honor you. We honor you and we thank God for you. We pray the blessing of God over your life. We pray that you would hear what has been spoken over you today and celebrate. Today my heart is for families. Families that are right now kind of separated. I want us to pray a blessing and restoration over them all. That God would bless and restore I want to pray for every broken-hearted person who might just be feeling a little bit less this morning. And I want to pray specifically before we walk out of this room for mothers who are mothers to others and you don't even know it. Your place in their life means more to them than you know. More than you may ever know, but it matters. So for all mothers, if you wouldn't mind just for a moment, would all mothers in the building just please rise to your feet and let us just honor you for just a moment. Every mother, what a blessing. There will be times when you will get down, but don't stay there. You are exactly the mother that they need. God gave them to you and you to them. So it's okay to be the mean mom. Hold them to their word and not care how everybody else down the street does it. I'm not raising everybody down the street, I'm raising you. And while they're making license plates in Rayford, you're not. So. You are not alone. Even if you feel like you are, you are not. You are not. And this vital, vital connection, you are making an impact. Say, I am. You are. You are. Kids, grandkids, Great-grandkids, great-great-grandkids, anybody with great-great, you need to sit down. 
I don't want to keep you standing for too long. God bless your heart. Great, great. You are making an impact, whether you think that you are or not. Not only with your own, but with the urchins up and down the streets. The little urchins that show up in your house. Let me pray for you. Husbands or, if you're, or whoever's standing, everybody together, just all stand together and just reach out and take them by their hand. You're just so blessed. Just reach out and take them by the hand. I appreciate you. Father, we pray this morning a blessing over these mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, and great-great-grandmothers. That, Father, today would be more, even more to them than they thought that it was going to be. We pray that today there would be joy in their hearts and their houses. That, Father, there would be where there is needed, there would be restoration wherever it might be needed. We pray that today your kingdom would come and your will would be done in marriages and homes and families. God, that you would restore the celebration of mothering and motherhood. God, that you would restore the church, even the church, back to the place of honoring those that we're supposed to honor. The Father, today we would loudly and clearly honor those who are doing it correctly. And Father, we would obediently, in obedience to your word, honor those who may not. Have your way, Lord. Bless your people. Bless the homes and bless the families, we pray today. In Jesus' name. right? Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you today. Happy Mother's Day to you today. Happy Mother's Day to you today. All through the rest of this day, celebrate. Would you? No? Okay. Y'all are like, this. went to church, that's enough. No, no, no. All through the rest of this day, celebrate. Come here if you would, please. I don't get you in here enough. So when I get you, I like to brag. Just bragging. Just bragging. Whenever we visit other churches, I make sure and point her out so that the men in the congregation don't think, hey, who's that girl? <laughs> you want to say? A blessing over your families, but through the rest of this day, celebrate. Find yourself holding hands. Find yourself celebrating. Make yourself do something that you wouldn't normally do. Give honor. Make sure that you do that. Young people, young men who've got your mothers with you, give that mother honor. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for raising us right. I want to pray a blessing over you before I let you out of here. We were going to do some other things, but I'm just going to say amen. Father, we pray for your people, pray for your, your church. We pray for the families. Pray that you would do a work, God, in us. Take our hearts back to first love. Take our hearts back to priority. Father, for the ladies that are in here right now that are not mothers that are seeking to be, I pray your blessing over their lives that you would continue to work in them. We pray, God, for families that might not be in this moment all connected and all that they need to be. We pray you bless them and bring them together. Let the walls come down, let healing happen. Let love flow in those places. For the mothers that don't feel sufficient, God, thank you for confirming with them one more time that we are who you called us to be. We pray your blessing over families, and as we leave from here today, go with us. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. And they said... Amen. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.